are using pictures of your clients to promote your services and to get more clients into your salon or spa. If you are, then listen on because I've done two posts. This is the second one. The first looked at, are we taking pictures of the back of clients' heads? Again, if you are, look at that first one, because if you are, it's not an effective way to market your skills. In the first post, I covered how it is the face that matters. And in an ideal world, it is your face that needs to be with those pictures of your clients. Now, the post started because I've seen so many hair professionals taking pictures of the back of clients' heads. And it really is an ineffective way to promote your skills. So I talked about how either we need to be brave and confident and ask our client, can we take a picture? But it has to have their face in it. Or ideally, it is you, not the client, but you who needs to be in that picture. I then said, part two, I would look at coming back and doing a second post, which is, you know, you've got this fantastic picture. You've rocked up on that cutting stool. You've got a picture of yourself with your work, showing off your skills, and now you're going to post it. So what do you write to go with a post that assists you in growing your reputation as the place to go, the person to see, and the skilled team in that salon that people need to book in with. So I'm going to use, when I like to broadcast, I like to use my slides, and I'm going to show you the post and just briefly talk through each part. That way I don't miss anything. You can find the post at www www.thesalonmoneymaker.com. I'll put a link in with the post. And if you've gone there, you'll find this video, which I hope in sharing, I'll probably give you a few extra tidbits that aren't included in the written version, but it gives you the choice. You can read it or you can watch. So I have put down a little list of our key things we need to think about when we're writing these posts that are designed to entice, intrigue, capture that particular client that's looking at the picture of your style. And if you are hair or beauty, if you're taking pictures of nails, eyebrows, if you're taking pictures of your work to promote yourself, get yourself in those pictures, and here is what we need to think about when we're writing. I'm gonna give you five key points. Avoid industry jargon, use questions, headlines and lists, benefits and stories, and calls to action. So let's start. Hopefully you can still see it, but it's more there for me because otherwise I will forget what I'm doing. So avoid industry jargon. Now, what I find when I look at a lot of people's posts is that we'll tend to focus on what we've done. What I, I've, I've done a framing haircut and used an ash toner. And clients don't care. That means nothing to them. Industry jargon is anything that is a specific term, phrase, words that are used in an industry that has little or no meaning to anyone outside of the industry and can be confusing and most importantly, boring. We have a really short period of time to catch that person's attention. And that's what it's all about, is attention. Someone's gonna come onto their screen, whether it's handheld, an iPad, a tablet, or a laptop, and they're gonna scroll along. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Watch yourself when you do it. If you see something that catches your attention, you'll read on. But if it doesn't catch your attention, you'll pass it by. Big thing that you'll tend to find that most people will look at will be video. And as you say in the first post, if you can be brave, get your confidence, get strong practice and do a video. Hi, everyone. It's Julie at 
Donnie's salon. And I'm just finishing up with this fantastic client. It can be the back of the head if the client doesn't want to be in the video, but video will catch attention much quicker. I've got my picture. I'm trying to catch their attention. I've got three to eight seconds. So what I write needs to be attractive to the person reading it. An industry jargon telling the client the story of the work you have done, what colors you've used, what techniques you've used, any words that are jargon will bore the client. So we need to avoid anything that is industry focused. Our clients do not care about our industry. They do not care about the salon and they do not care about you. And that might seem really harsh to say, but it is just how human beings work. I'm posting to potential clients who don't know me, have no relationship with me. They don't know the salon, the story, the business, the stylist. They don't care. And that's okay. But it's our job with our promotion to try and grab their attention and get their interest because that's where the relationship starts. So jargon, my first top tip, when you start writing anything, do make sure that it avoids industry jargon. And I'll read you an example. This fresh blonde with soft lowlights to break the blonde and retoned with an ash toner. Now, as you listen to that, if you're in the industry, you'll go, oh dear, okay. I, can, I know what they've been doing. And if there was a picture to go with it, you'd be able to look and go, yeah, I can see it. And it's great to take these photos if you're sharing to other professionals and to use the jargon, the information about what you've done. That's great. But if it's to potential clients, it means nothing. And I don't, what does that mean? What is, what's an, what, what is ash? Is ash like, like when you burn something? It doesn't mean anything. So when you start to put together your post, your written information, make sure you're avoiding jargon, industry terms, techniques, words that we would understand, but anyone else with no experience of our industry will find hard. So that's number one, avoid industry jargon techniques. And there's a little story in the post and I'll pop it on and I, I'll read it through. But I think it kind of sums it up. Man walks into a salon, true story. And he uh, sits down with the stylist, he's a new client, and he misses the first bit of information the stylist shares. But here's the second part. And the, the stylist asks, what do you usually have? What does your barber usually use on your hair? And he misses the first choice, but he hears the word shears. And he thinks to himself, shears, okay, shears, sheep. That, that's like a, a set of clippers. Yeah, shears, he uses shears. And the client was a little surprised when, of course, the stylist pulled out a pair of scissors and started to work. But he didn't say anything. He let her carry on working. But it was starting to take a little bit longer than he was anticipating. And so he asked her a question to try and see if he could jolly her along to, to speed up the process. And in that question, she answered, yeah, I'm not used to using shears to cut my client's hair. And he realized the error. And so he encouraged her to change and she pulled out her clippers and got to work. And in understanding the miscommunication, he made a comment to her as to, you know, I'm, I didn't realize that those were shears. And she looked at him with a facial expression of disgust, of annoyance, of frustration. Not really the sort of impression we want to give. It's just a miscommunication. If we're using any form of, of technical words, jargon, industry speak, that anyone else will find confusing, we're going to have miscommunication, whether it's on a social media post, on our websites, in our price lists, and in person. And that can feel frustrating for us, but it is often us that has caused the miscommunication. But a true story. 
he thought she is would mean hold on there we go <laughs> that he's going to be sheared like a sheep it doesn't mean anything people have grown up being pass me the scissors they didn't know what it was so let's come down to our next point some number two which is ask questions now especially women when it comes to marketing using a question in your post is a great way of stopping us in our tracks so as we're scrolling along we see this fantastic picture there's the stylist there's the back of the client's head or if we can the front the faces and they everyone looks really happy and excited i love being at this salon post one do make sure you have a look at it i talk about the importance of checking out the client's facial expression to make sure that it's not one of oh my god no i don't really want to have my photo taken because it gives the impression then that i'm not actually happy here i don't actually like what i've had to, i don't like it make sure you get the right facial expressions so we've scrolled we're looking use a question you can use any form of open question what would you feel with the best hair color you've ever experienced something that asks a question because it stops us in our tracks our brain likes anything that's intriguing maybe it's a puzzle you ask a question that makes someone have to stop and think and in doing that we start to engage different parts of our brain because that's how humans work so you can use questions at the start of your post to grab the attention of that person and now we will read on so at the top the beginning of your post you can use questions you've got what how who when where be careful with why why are you watching this why are you watching this huh why are you watching? it can sound aggressive so be careful if you're using a why as an opener to your questions what would your dream color be how do clients feel after a visit with us something to catch their attention that needs answering so that's my second one second tip then we come to number three let's put it on a solo so you can see it as well hopefully it's big enough on your screen and if not just go over to the website and you'll be able to see it all unless you're watching this on the website and you can scroll down whilst you listen lists and headlines people will only skim read the first few words of each sentence so what you write needs to be to the point and short so when you write if we write what i'll call waffle and maybe waffle is um let's use a facial example because facials it's very easy to get caught up in waffle this indulgent facial uses a combination of massage and oils that help to repenetrate the skin with hydration it gets boring waffle is anything that is too long so we want to keep it short and to the point we can use a headline and then a list so we list the benefits of what the person is going to get or what the person in the picture has received now when you do this we start again with a headline or a question you can use one or the other a headline should be between 6 to 15 words max short to the point grab their attention with lists we can do it as bullet points you know 100% grey coverage which gives you and keep it short and to the point focus to the benefit of what the client in the picture has received or what the person reading the post is going to get it's all about what they want and not what we've been doing i'm going to come down on the post so just excuse me while i scroll through so here's an example i've put on the post and i shall read it from the side and i'll pop it up on the find my mouse here we go so the example we listen to understand you and create the wow look you want now the reason i've gone with we listen is that a lot of people feel 
So it's important if you're going to put something like this, that your team is well trained to be able to fulfill what you're saying. We listen to create what you want, to create the wow. I'm looking to try and put people at ease. We are a very friendly group of people in our industry, I like to think. In general, we love working with people. So understanding that a lot of people are scared to go to a new salon is really important. I want to now try and put people at ease that we will listen to you. We understand you. We're here to create what it is you want, what you're looking for. But we still must manage expectations. The balancing act. When we then use our list, we're going to list the benefits. Whenever we start talking about uh, an ash toner, a particular coloring technique, how we've restyled, they are all features. Features don't sell. The client isn't interested in the technical words, the what we have done, the features of what we've done. Their interest is in the benefits. Let me put that one on the solo. There you go. So benefits, let's come down. Benefits and stories. As you write your post, keeping it short, using headline or questions, thinking about bullet points, focus on the benefits. If I were to put in as an example, we use the so what technique, so what? As you look at what you've written, ask yourself, so what? And then answer that question. So this great balayage blonde framing service, so what? Give me now the benefit, what is it going to give me? The results are a more natural look, so what? With no harsh or obvious regrowth lines. So what? Give me the benefit. What do I get from that? Which requires less maintenance. Perfect for the busy woman. In using so what, it allows us to just make sure that what we are writing is focused on what the client is going to get. What will they receive? What is the benefit to them? So what? It allows you to ensure that what you've written is focused to the client and not us and our story of what we've done. Focus on the benefits. What will I get if I book artwork for my nails with you? What will I get if I've booked in for a restyle? Give me the benefits. And with here, I also talk about stories. Facts fade, stories stick. Now I'll share you a story that's in my online course. It's a massage story, but it makes no difference. It's still relevant. It's a service that was provided. But the story was, a lady came into my salon. I had hair and beauty. And she had a severe neck problem. She was living constantly in pain. And so we worked out a program for her. She had been told that she probably would never work again. It was a really serious condition, but it was muscular and we had permission from her doctors. It was everything was done professionally. And within eight weeks, she was going for job interviews. So she'd been told that, you know, this is it. You're going to live with this pain, constant pain, every second of the day with a headache to go for job interviews. She loved us. I mean, we to her, we'd saved her life. It was a dramatic change. So we had a story. And I have no doubt if I had made a short video of her story and shared that story, it would have probably have gone viral, certainly within the local community, because a lot of people suffer with back injuries. And finding someone that could make a difference to our lives is a great story. So can you find stories that you can share? Or as you are putting your posts together, you write it as a short story. Maybe it's someone whose hair is thinning and you've been able to help them. 
Maybe it's how they've had a restart. Maybe they're going through a terrible divorce and they're feeling really lousy and they come in and have their hair done and feel like a million dollars. With their permission, can you find stories? And do post stories about your sales or the salon. How did you get into the industry? What's your story? Stories stick. People remember stories. And the idea, the focus of using our pictures of clients, pictures of ourselves, is to tell our story. Because if it sticks in here, they're more likely to take action and come in to us. So we focus on benefits, and if we can, we find a story. I'm gonna squizzle down. And I even use a personal one in the post. Oh, look, there's me with blonde hair. And it's true, I arrived in the salon feeling exhausted. I felt frankly unattractive. I did, I felt really rough and terrible. It was an awful time in my life, many years ago now, thank goodness. But I felt unattractive and I needed a change. I felt so tired. I left blonde, feeling strong, confident, and ready for everything. Friends even said I looked like Marilyn Monroe. They did. Oh my God. What a compliment. I don't think I do, by the way. But that's what they said at the time. That's my story. And I could have had the salon, the salon could have shared that as a story. I couldn't stop smiling. It's true what they say a change is as good as a rest. And I did, I left, I arrived feeling really crappy and exhausted and tired and just frankly, you know, and I left like, ah, I feel fantastic. Ah. And I couldn't stop smiling and people gave me lots of compliments and that made me feel even better. And I felt recharged, strong, energized. And that sometimes I think we forget the impact we can have on clients and how they feel. So look for stories. What stories can you share about the experience of other clients with their permission and ideally stage eight clients? If you haven't had a chance yet to go over on the web page, you'll find at the top www.thesalonmoneymaker.com. On the menu at the top, you'll see the gift. And the gift is two lessons from my online training course. There's no, you've got to sign up. There's no, you know, you've got to join me at a particular day, at a particular hour. You just go in and have a go at them. There are two lessons. One is on dealing with customers and complaints, demanding people and unhappy clients. And the other is all about the stages a client goes through to become stage eight. And stage eight clients are the clients who will be happy to help you whether it's taking photos, whether it's giving you referrals, giving you ratings and reviews. Those are the clients you wanna be focusing on when it comes to this type of promotion. So we talked briefly in the post about emotions. Now, if you've followed any of my work in the past, you'll know that I talk a lot about how this works because everything comes from here. And buying or booking is an emotional experience. It's wonderful to think that we can be logical and we'll sit there and logically go, well, I actually don't need these pair of shoes. And I know I like these shoes, but logically I've got 17 pairs, so I'm not gonna buy them. No, we stand there holding those shoes and we want them, we want them, we want them, because it's an emotional decision. Buying, scientists believe, is between 70 to 90% an emotional experience. So with our posts, what we're looking to achieve is to get some kind of emotional attachment. And that's why stories are powerful because it's much easier to show an emotion. And just to prove a point, I've added in a video to the post, which I'm not gonna play for you now, but it's all about someone who has a terrible car crash and it's the story of what happens. And you might find if you watch it, if you've ever watched anything, whether it's on social media or at the movies and whether you're instantly laughing your head off or have you ever seen someone on, say, like a skateboard and they fall off across, like, you know, like the bars and they've gone to jump over the railings and then they boof and you're like, oh, you know, I'm not a man. I don't have bits down below and I'm still there going, oh, we resonate, we connect 
we mirror what we see. If we see something that's emotional, we'll be there like, oh, I've never met these people ever in my life. I don't know them. I'm crying my eyes out. We are emotional when it comes to buying as well. So we look for how we can connect with our clients on an emotional level. And then finally, what do you want them to do? We've got this far, we've held their attention. They're still reading on. What do you want them to do? There's two types of marketing that we can use at this point. Either this post is purely awareness. And awareness marketing is a bit like going, hi, just want to remind you, we're still here. And awareness marketing does work. But it's really, I think, for bigger companies. You're either using awareness with things like your posts, and it is purely just a want to keep in your mind who we are. Big companies use it. If you ever watch an ad for that, where are you? At the movies, online, watching TV, and there's no promotion, no sale, 50% off until Monday. There's no promotion, nothing to call today, delay, and you'll miss out. There's nothing to make me do anything. It's awareness. They're spending a lot of money to get into your head so that when you do want to book a holiday, buy a particular phone, drink a particular soda, you will automatically, and you will automatically, be more inclined to pick theirs because their awareness has been going into your head and it is in there. So if I promote my picture and I put nothing, no call to action, then it is going to be awareness. And I won't see anything initially. It might be that someone will go, oh my God, look, that's that salon, I saw that picture and I'm walking past, I'm gonna pop in. That's how awareness will work. But if you're gonna put all of this effort in, if you've caught their attention, if they've stayed and watched and looked at your picture or your short video, if they've read the bullet points with the benefits, they've read a small story and it is going to be really short. What do you want me to do now? That's nice. What a beautiful haircut. What wonderful people. Because if there's nothing to make me do something, I'm going to scroll. So if you've got them to this point, at the end, what's your call to action? What do you want me to do now? Do you want me to call the salon? What if I like your post? Will you give me something? Is there an incentive for me to do something? So at the end of your post, and you can read it when you have a look through, what do you want me to do? What is the reward I will get? First five people to click like and say, I love it, get a complimentary blow dry, a monetary voucher to use on their first visit. What am I going to get? What is it that's going to make me go from looking to not scrolling and taking some form of action? Whether it is to click, I like it. Whether it is to share it. Whether it is to comment. What? Do you want me to do and what am I going to get? We call it what's in it for me. What, what do you want me to do and what am I going to get? So when you're posting, please make sure, unless you are focused to awareness marketing, if it's there to get you clients, you need to tell me what I need to do click a button, click a like, make a comment, message us. What am I going to get and what must I do now? There must be a call to action. When you look at your calls to action, there are six key reasons people will do something. And they are, I shall read it through briefly, greed. If I make a decision now, I will get a reward, whether it's a complimentary service, whether it's a voucher that I can use, that is a response to greed. If I decide to take action, I'm going to get something. Fear. If I don't make a decision now, I'm going to miss out. Only two uh, blow dries available. Complimentary blow dry for the first two people. Oh, 
I better take action now. I need to react quickly. The fear of missing out. Then we come down to altruism. I think I pronounced that correctly. If I make a decision now, I'm helping others. Not really going to be what we can use for a promotion which is geared to new clients coming through the door, new people. But it might be we can use that when we are working with established clients, stage eight clients. If you share the post with your friends, you will get, we'll take action because we want to help you and we benefit from it as well. Envy, if I don't make a decision now, someone else will win and I'm going to miss out. I don't want to miss out. I don't want to miss out. Oh, it's me. I want to win. I want to be the one who gets it. Pride, we make a decision because it makes us feel smart. We've made a good choice. And shame, if I don't make a decision, I'm going to look stupid. Those are the key reasons people will take action. I believe, which I've highlighted in blue, greed, fear and envy are the main ones we need to consider when we're putting our posts together. One final point. Our clients, as I said just now, potential clients, they don't know us, they don't know how we work. If, especially if they have had a bad experience, a negative experience in the past, they will have big emotions of fear, concern, What? If And if you go and watch the two videos in the second video, which looks at, um, in fact, I'll put it up here. It's all about the gold of fast growth, which is about how we get more referrals, ratings and reviews. Our clients who come through referrals will spend more money than any other new client because they arrive already trusting us. In that post, in that, well, not post, in that lesson, we go to stage, we've got the hunt, which is stage one. Stage two is what if. And what if is where it's a, you know, oh my God, what what if? What if, what if I've made a bad decision? What if they butcher my hair? Our clients, whether we like it or not, whether we understand it or not, have a fear. The fear of making a decision. And a great professor described it as decision phobia, the fear of making a decision. That's why our call to action is so important and it must be attractive to the person. We can all experience it. If you've ever been in a restaurant and you, you're sitting there looking, at, especially when we've given too much choice, if we're given too much choice, it becomes, oh, I can't decide. What are you having? You've looked at a menu and heard someone else say or say it yourself. What are you having? because we want, we can't make a decision. Decision phobia can affect any of us at any point. If you've ever, I don't know, been on a date and you found yourself changing your outfit about six times, decision phobia, the inability to make a decision. It's an important, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's important to understand that that's what our clients will be going through. And we want to make that decision as easy as possible and then fill them with confidence that they've made the right choice. Using your pictures, using video is an important strategy in your marketing because what you are doing is using authority marketing. You are showing your skills to show that you are the expert. You are the person that I should call. I need to come to you because you obviously know what you're doing and what you're talking about. You are the authority. So use these posts. Use them well. Keep what you write short and to the point. Avoid anything that's industry based. If no one else is going to understand what, you know, a mid shaft is, what base is, don't talk about it because it's not going to assist you in attracting people in. And do make sure at the end of the post, unless you're focusing on awareness, that there is some form of call to action. Two posts. Go and have a look at the first one if you haven't already. That just talks about the power of the face and why faces need to be in your marketing. And the face of you or your team needs to be regularly in your marketing. 
whether it be that you use it purely on your social media and on your website, any form of online presence, it is this that builds trust. It is this that they, people can read. You can read my facial expressions. You can hear the tone of my voice. Video is the second most powerful way of marketing your business. Number two, well, number one is you in person. I've walked in the salon and you are the most per powerful person. Two is video because you get to meet me, not in person, but you can still read my facial expressions. And number three is using images. But do make sure, get yourselves in those pictures. Keep the information you write short to the point and call to action. What do you want them to do? I hope you've enjoyed this little post. Do read through the whole article. Let me know how you get on. You can follow me on the Facebook page for the Salon Moneymaker. And if you haven't had a chance, it is a gift. And when I use the word gift, because gift is is very important. There's a difference between a marketing tool and someone giving you a gift. A marketing tool is something that is going to be logoed, that has uh, terms and conditions, that you must do something before you can get what it is that's being given for free. A gift has no strings. You don't need to give me your email address. You don't need to join me at any time. You can just go over to the website, click the page, the gift, and you'll find two lessons from Salon Team Training that you can try for free. If you like what you see, you are welcome to join the waiting list. Training opens every six to eight weeks. It is the complete course for salon professionals on how to succeed with clients. It's not focused on services. It is purely focused. Someone walks through my door how should I behave? How do I use communication skills? How do I do a consultation? How do I think about my body language when I'm working with that client? How do I introduce home care? How do I ask a client to rebook? A step-by-step -step guide that any professional, hair, beauty, nails, massage, anyone who does a service with a client can benefit from and improve their success. Have a fantastic day wherever you are and I will look forward to seeing you soon. Take care.